Welcome back to Nostalgia Rewind. I'm West. And I'm Chris. And today we are watching Con Air. Do, 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 do. Yes. Nicholas Cage. We should definitely have a marathon where we watch Nicholas Cage and call it a Cage Fest. Cage Fest 2020. See you there. All right. Uh, and of course, spoilers ahead. All right. Uh, came out in 1997. Synopsis is newly paroled ex-con and former U.S. Ranger Cameron Poe finds himself trapped in a prisoner transport plane when the passenger sees control. Uh, starring Nicolas Cage, John Cusack, John Malkovich, Dave Chappelle, Steve Buscemi, Danny Trejo. So for me, this movie is a staple of my childhood. It is something I've bonded and watched many times with my mom. Very fond memories of this movie. I really like this movie. I think it still probably does hold up. It's Nicolas Cage, so he has a very uh, abstract way of acting. I think it's a little tame here, but I think his acting is timeless. The way that he acts. In this movie in particular? No, I guess Nicolas Cage in general. He acts so... Like, he's kind of like a Jackson Pollock painting. Like, it's always going to be splattered paint on the wall. Like, it's always... it was It's weird now. It'll be weird later, but it will it will last longer than, like... Or maybe I'm just giving him too much credit or something. I mean, have you seen The Wicker Man? Yeah, Timeless. No, that's not the word I would use. He has some good movies. He has some bad movies. I think he... But we all still talk about The Wicker Man. Like, there's not, there's not a movie that is bad right that we continue talking about right because you know you just for a bad movie you just forget about that bad movie but the wicker man he acts a certain way and does certain things that makes you remember whether but, you consider it high art or good in context i guess that's what i mean by timeless i mean like i mean i don't know if everybody else remembers the wicker man and the constant is, is like oh yeah nicholas cage was real bad in the wicker man like when they want to give an example of him being really bad in a movie they say wicker man like that's just my go-to because i remember watching that movie and it was awful so, so how do you feel about con air oh okay um so i did not grow up watching this movie the first time i saw this was you showed it to me so probably i don't know within the last five six years maybe a little longer than that uh, i remember really enjoying it i super love the cast so so yeah it has a fantastic cast uh, i do think it is one of nicholas cage's better roles love john malkovich i think he's phenomenal and cyrus the virus just about everything yeah and there's there's no there's not a whole lot of like specific scenes or anything that like jumps out to me that I remember specifically besides Steve Buscemi being with the little girl. Easily a disturbing scene. Yes, yeah, super. So besides that, yeah, there's there's not a whole lot I remember besides that I remember really liking it and the select few people that are in it that I enjoyed. Nice. I think it, it, will, it will hold up though. I mean, again, like I said, I did not grow up with this movie and I only watched it within the past 10 years. I really think it was like five years ago. So I... I think this will still be good. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of things that are working against it in today's time, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I think this is going to be a fun time. Good nostalgia rewind, at least, you know. Hoping. Hoping. Knock on wood. It most likely would, but uh, we'll see. All right, here we go. We're going to watch it right now. All right, we finished watching Con Air, and I thought it was still what it is to me. It was still good. It was still good to me. It hasn't changed. It's like, you know, cheese on top of cheese. It's not a good movie, but I love this movie. I think it's a good movie. I mean, yeah, I guess I just say that because I don't want anybody to tell me, like, but Wesley, it's a bad movie. So I want to say it first. Like, oh, yeah, it's a bad movie. But I, I do you. like it. I do. I like it a lot. There's a lot of weird, silly lines, silly things. It's Nick Cage being country. What state was he from? Oh, fuck. Um, I just didn't remember. Did they say where he was living? Yeah, yeah he's from somewhere. They call him Hillbilly. So I'm assuming, you know, and his mom lives in a trailer from what he said. But uh, it sounds like he's doing a uh, Forrest Gump impersonation at times. So it's really not the best accent. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds it sounds like he's putting on an accent at sometimes, but whatever you are, <clears throat> whatever, whoever. It's definitely not Nick Cage's worst performances. Yeah. I think he did fine. Um, I think it was a good movie. There are things that don't hold up in the sense that they're just very dated to its time, like that. Uh, the title sequence looks real bad now. I'm sure it was like, yeah, this is cool, Gunner. Yeah. So basically, yeah, the the title 
battle sequence just slams onto the screen really quickly. And but then like, like jets out of there real quick. But like, like an iMovie or like Windows Movie Maker type fashion. Like, yeah, it looks kind of, it looks kind of, it looks really dated. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. Um, also, all the Dutch angles were a super weird choice to me. I mean, I don't know where they fit into movies, but when I see them, it just seems real student film like. Like we're trying to be artsy. Uh, so yeah, I think Dutch angles work the best, and you can easily pass them up, or not pass them up, but um, accept them in horror movies. What uh, horror movies have you seen Dutch angles in? The supernatural saying... horror movie. Uh, the super show. Na- the show. They do Dutch angles in there. Do they? I think so. Uh, let me know uh, about those uh, Dutch angles, supernatural. Uh, uh, or but... just any movie. I want to know, or anything. I want to know. Okay, where so Dutch I can't name it. Good. Okay, so I can't name it off the top of my head, but there are. You just feel that they look best in in horror. You feel like that goes with Be- the horror. Yeah, because the horror genre is to make you feel uneasy, and Dutch angles make a scene feel uneasy. I guess. That, okay. Okay. I guess, I guess. I guess it's I like can, weird, like off-putting. I guess I can off, see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely does not work More in this pass. movie yeah, or it was a most weird or most movies. Yeah. Yeah. What else was there in this? Oh, the the CG isn't horrible. It is not bad, but some of it's kind of funny. Yeah, definitely funny. Um, definitely funny. The I think the first explosion of the entire movie when the I think it's a guard. I don't even remember now. But yeah, the they guy go. <laughs> they go. In, yeah, they go into the into Cyrus's cell and they find out that Cyrus yes. has a bunch of hidden stuff in the walls where he somehow made a fake wall or brick. Somehow he got explosives <laughs> and then it explodes and when that explodes that door flies off and yeah I guess that looked a little shoddy. It, it looked funny. It, it looked, looked like funny. the guy the 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 man is very stiff. The guard was very stiff flying back. It didn't feel realistic. But again, this movie came out when was it again? 19 1997. It's fine. It's fine. It 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 held up better than a lot of other movies I've seen. Yo, and John Cusack, the, the first thing he said is like, don't touch anything. I'll be right back. Yeah, what the motherfucker do? He opened something that says, do not open. And then, and then the, I think the funny part is is that John Cusack runs out because he has to, He has this new information, runs down the hall, and then somehow, I guess he knows that they're opening his it. His instinct, and he, he's just intuitive he, to he's it. He's intuitive and he turns around and he's like, no, they're gonna touch something that's dangerous. And then it explodes. And, and then, then it explodes. <laughs> and then the door flings by him. Yeah, that was... There was also a lot of those shots too, where like things miss someone by a hair. They did, yes. Yeah, so and the- nobody really reacts to it the way that they should. <laughs> Everybody was real serious. Like the one scene where Nick Cage and John Malkovich are fighting, like a propeller a- cuts the plane in half. Yeah, and it goes right in between them, and they both kind of just stand there like nothing happened. Uh, maybe people just weren't used to acting with scenes. I mean, definitely. Like all the time. I don't yeah. know how popular. They're like yeah, when and a, it started and a, pro- popular. and a propeller goes through here. What do you do? It's like, well, I'm still tough. Just act. <laughs> <laughs> we're both still tough men, so we're unfazed. Yeah. Um, Danny Trejo looks weird without a mustache. Super weird without a mustache. Yeah. Uh, it took me a second to realize that that was him. Yeah, yeah. He looks way less tough. It's funny how a mustache makes you look tougher. Well, uh, it makes, I don't know. On some people, I you guess with a makes... mustache alone, you do not look tough. No offense. What do I look like with a mustache? I don't know. Uncomfortable? Sleazy? <laughs> I look uncomfortable. You hear that? You make me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so me with a mustache is uncomfortable and sleazy that's funny um, it just doesn't see you I'm sorry yeah that's totally <laughs> fine I just think it's funny that it's like uncomfortable <laughs> um okay so that that what else what else was interesting about this movie um the soundtrack is awful oh, the yeah. score is very dated it's very <laughs> 90s that like electric guitar solo like guitar yeah. solo wow yeah. wow 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 <laughs> It was it was awful, but as I said earlier, I don't I don't know what I would change it with because it's it's a product of its time. Mm-hmm. It just is what it is. Also, the fact that there's only two songs in this movie that aren't the score. What are the two songs? Sweet Home Alabama and um. How do I? Yeah. Oh man, what is the name of that song? <laughs> How do I live by right. Diane Warren? So nope, that... just kidding. Performed by Trisha Yearwood. So it was written by Diane. Warren. What's it called? How do I live? So how do I live and. And Sweet Home Alabama were the two songs they really used throughout the entire movie. And uh, yeah, they probably blew all, a lot of their budget on these two... These um, two songs. These two songs. Uh, Steve Buscemi looks very young in this movie. Super young. I didn't... Like, I guess... I don't know. 
I, I just didn't expect him to look so young. I thought he's just yeah. So when listen. he's when he's first introduced, he's introduced because he's like killed thirty people. He has like basically the Hannibal Lecter mask. Up, yeah. You know they they have they need sticks to hold him. Like he has like some sort of mutant ability or powers or whatever. And he's like the most intelligent one there. And then when they go on and land at Werner Lerner Lerner Airfield, he finds the only girl there has tea with her, and it's kind of like in the beginning implied that he may do something like he may kill her but at the end you see her wave at the end and he gave her a male like Ken doll and, and she has like the Barbie doll or whatever but at the end he uh, is seen playing at the casino but at the end of the day this this is still a man who killed 30 people like and, and at the end like I know it's a joke but like it's like meant to for us to like sympathize or be like haha look he got out but like we wouldn't be like haha look this man who killed 30 people made it whoo because I sympathize yeah, with yeah, him yeah, yeah. you know he um, still killed was, people it, it was I think heavily implied that he was battling himself when he was with the little girl to not hurt her. To not hurt her. But yeah, just interesting that we're, it, it's meant as like a lighthearted joke that he made it out, even though he is a killer. He's like, yeah. Like. I mean, they had him like chained up, like you said, like Hannibal Lecter style. Uh, yeah. So clearly, his hands were like puppy dog style to his <laughs> chest like this. Like. He's a pretty brutal guy. Plus every criminal on this plane besides Nicolas guy. Cage and his friend Baby Boy or Baby O, whatever his name is. Baby O. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> they were all like also what did security. baby o do like he needed insulin <coughs> and you know nick cage was always going to seven and then he turned to god in the beginning but like what was he in jail because he said oh it's gonna be a long time before i ever see a parole paper or no you're free out of jail he made it they didn't say in the beginning when nick cage was writing his letters and he was like i met him a guy named baby o and he gives him the snowball they just said that he he, he just said he that they met him it. yeah never mentioned it but how, why know, does he have so many years and we're made, made to sympathize with him but we don't know his crime like he could have like if he's in supermax he prison, wasn't in supermax though because he was in prison with nicholas cage but i'm telling you that he told nicholas cage like it's gonna be a long time before i see yeah that doesn't mean he's in supermax that just means he has a lot of years okay same difference he has a lot of years why'd he get those years that's what i'm i mean to say. yes yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't know yeah i mean overall, it's overall still, it still holds up holds up it, the movie runs in on an hour and 55 minutes maybe a little too long but you know i didn't think it felt it didn't too feel too long. long, but I'm always like, two hours, all. I mean, yeah, if, if you did look at the time, you'd be like, mm, do I really want to sit down for two hours? But it doesn't it doesn't drag at all. The pacing, I think, is pretty good. It's pretty, pretty good. good. Uh, Another interesting thing is, like, at the end, they, like, the, the movie ends or whatever, and then they have a scene, kind of like a, a 90s sitcom, where they show all the characters' faces and then say their the name at the end. And it kind of feels like something you would do at a play, you know, where, like, all the characters come out and they, like, take a bow. And I just think that's a funny thing to add at the end of a movie. Like, imagine watching, like, Avatar or, like, some modern movie. And at the end, you just, they just go through all the characters and they're like, you know. I think we've seen a movie recently and we're just not remembering. Because it's not as rare as you're making it out. Okay, okay. I don't know if it's as common now. But I remember seeing plenty of kid, uh, plenty of movies when I was a kid that did that whole get up. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know if it was just, like, a 90s, 2000s thing. 90s, 2000s. And we don't do it as often now. But I feel like there's been a recent movie movie where they did something <laughs> that same style okay whatever um let's see Cyrus the virus you know dave Chappelle. not much to say i mean he was in it they threw he him off fun. of a plane he was a fun character his name was pinball you know, when he starts the fire on that other guy couldn't yeah. he have started it somewhere else like not necessarily somewhere else but like put it somewhere else when he was like did it have to be that guy did he have to set a man on fire i guess that's like the could he have like put something on the plane on fire instead like i or mean was it's the only way the plan going to work is if it was the man sitting next to him. I think it has to be enough of an emergency, right? I think a fire in an airplane is enough of an emergency. Well, I guess they have to get the guy out. Like, if it was just, like, a seat that was on fire, they'll just use the extinguisher put it out and then okay, nobody gets okay, free okay that's right and he wouldn't have been able to stand up and do what he was do doing do what he was gonna do okay whatever. fair because I was like that's, that's really fucked up this dude didn't do anything to you uh, you said you were a really nice guy here you are burning people right but okay I guess he had to uh, wasn't worth it though he died he sure did <laughs> uh let's see There, there's something else so um was there anything else I had the virus killing people they were on a plane they landed in the Vegas strip yeah man there would have been so many people dead and nobody was like freaking out about that towards the end yeah. also when Nick, Nick Cage gets off the plane they kind of just let him go like I know he's a free man everybody lets him go like Bishop which was the guard that he was protecting 
protecting on the ship was like, just take a bus next time. And then like, he had the choice. And then like, you know, she kisses him on the cheek and then she leaves. And then, and then John, John Cusack, Cusack lets him leave. Like just everybody's like, go ahead, kid. I get it. There's still paperwork to be done. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You can't just walk away. I know it's been a crazy day, but. And then, yeah, when they showed the ship and the plane lands there by the character named Swamp Thing, which is, I don't know, funny, funny to me. But he lands, they land on the ship. There's like 10 cars on the, on the Las Vegas strip and that's just fiction okay <laughs> <laughs> that is pure fiction i can believe khan's taking over a plane but landing in a las vegas strip at night with nobody there okay yeah okay yeah. there would have been a ton of casualties like tons. hundreds and thousands of casualties because of them crashing this tons. way and them taking the the, the fire truck mm. and that whole debacle like they just caused a shit ton of problems oh and that's You know, and another thing. So, at the end, you know, that bunny that he was going to give his daughter for the longest time goes through. Gross. Literally falls, is dirty, has blood on it. Falls into Las Vegas water that and the, and it goes into a sewer and he reaches into the sewer. I guess he catches it before it falls into the sewer. It was still floating. Implying. It was still floating in, in sewage water. water. Yeah. You know, or soon to be sewage water. Um, and then he grabs it and then he still gives it to her like. In a way, that's almost like, are you delusional? Like, that thing is disgusting. He is delusional. He's been in prison for eight years. <laughs> that's like this the, is the best he can do. <laughs> the kid is... And then and then meeting... Like, he didn't want... He didn't see her, right? Or he didn't want to... Uh, his daughter to visit her in, in prison because he didn't want her to see her dad that way. Uh, but then... After seeing, like, I don't know, like, in Las Vegas, a plane crash, you're in this big city, <laughs> he's wearing, like, a, a wife beater with blood, all, with blood all over it, it's all dirty. Uh, he's, he's been shot in the arm. He's been shot in the arm. He's giving her a dirty bunny, and, like, is that a better scene? Is that, like, a better, is right. that a better moment to do that? <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. She oh. should have just went to prison to meet him. Oh, and then speaking about shot in the arm, I guess pure determination and anger Let's you just walk through a bullet. <laughs> just like, <laughs> like yeah, I know it just grazed him, but it wasn't. I but guess yeah, it's a graze. It was like it wasn't like dead center. It was kind of like off to the side. Okay, I think I don't know, but either way, whether it was dead center in his arm or off to the side, like he didn't move at all. <laughs> he should have no had... recoil. Yeah. Uh, so. I will say when I was a child, that was like the coolest scene. I was like, yeah, if I was angry enough, I could walk through a bullet and save someone's life. You know, and that's like such a child thought because the next thought after that is like on a plane <laughs> with a bunch of prisoners. <laughs> <laughs> I'd obviously be in jail, but I'll be the good jail person. Yes. Or prisoners, as they might call them. <laughs> jail person. Jail person. <laughs> um so yeah i think the movie holds up i think the movie's good yeah. i like it it's, it's a fun time. It's, 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 a good it's, story. it's a part of my life that i'll always cherish con air you know like convict air i'm sorry that took me a lifetime to figure out really connected the dots there okay so obvious too so obvious and then we could do some trivia now right? oh yeah, yeah let's see some trivia oh uh fun fact the director of the movie simon west Directed the music video for Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up. Small world. Never gonna give you up. He, uh, Little did he know when making that video. <laughs> Con Air. What else has mean. he done? What's his... What's his? Um, recently... Oh, yeah. I mean, he did Tomb Raider. <laughs> he did the Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider. Uh, but recently, let's see, he's done... He did uh, a movie called Gun Shy. I don't know. Uh, Stratton. I don't know. Wild card? I don't know. Stolen? I don't know. Uh, the Expendables 2. Boom, Expendables 2. He wrote that? He directed it. He directed it. So the director of Con Air directed Expendables 2. Uh, oh, When a Stranger Calls? When a Stranger Calls. This is obviously no longer recent. So. Ge- the General's Daughter? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Oh, John Travolta. Let's see. Trivia, trivia, trivia. Never gonna get you up. Oh, Dave Chappelle improvised most of his lines. He did great. <laughs> Yeah, Dave Chappelle did did really good. I mean, I think it's always interesting when uh, somebody or a director or the, a production uh, they're like, yeah, we just didn't write your line, so you're just gonna we're just gonna trust that you're gonna say the right things. I wonder if okay, because this next one, I wonder if this is why he improvised most of his lines. 
Um, John Malkovich was unhappy during production because the script was being rewritten virtually every day and he had no idea how his character was going to turn out. Totally understandable. Understandable. Because what are we doing? Which is funny because I commended the the writing because I really like that barbecue line. Well, what's the barbecue <laughs> line? Tell, tell them about um, it. It's Nicholas Cage talk, talking to John uh, Malkovich and he's trying to convince him, you know, to listen to him or whatever. And, but he says, hey, it's your barbecue and it tastes great. I don't know why I really like that line. <laughs> it's your barbecue and it tastes great. But it was it was smooth talking. Like I don't know. He was. It worked. It worked. I really enjoyed it. I think that line is. I'm gonna use it one day. It's a part of me now. It's good. It's, it's a good line. The Las Vegas scene was filmed at the legendary Sands Hotel immediately prior to its demolition. Demolition. When the production team learned about what the city's intention to raise the historic landmark. They immediately scheduled a multiple camera setup to take advantage of the rare event, which is what you actually see in the movie. Oh, so they they recorded the demolition? And they used is demolition they're, footage? They're I think I that's think what they're so. implying. Wow. That's interesting. That is so interesting. So that hotel doesn't exist anymore. Mm. We watched it get destroyed. <laughs> um, Nicholas Cage traveled to Alabama to perfect his accent. <laughs> So Nicholas Cage, does it say how long he went to Alabama to perfect no, his accent? No, it just says he went to Alabama to... That's so funny. But yo, that's, he's in it. He's an actor. I think that's funny because, I mean, I could be wrong because it's been a while since I've seen this one. But Raising Arizona, I feel like he kind of had a an accent there too. Again, could totally be wrong because I have not watched that movie in a really long time. But why would he have to go and perfect? Oh, maybe his character is supposed to be from Alabama? So Sweet he, home he, Alabama! Why, I don't know. Um... Uh, the song, the one out of the two songs in this movie, How Do I Live, was nominated for both an Oscar as Best Original Song and a Razzie as Worst Original Song. Wow. The it duality. Right? It didn't win either of them. So it's just a meh song. To a, a C student. It's just a song. <laughs> just, it's a song. While Sweet Home Alabama is plays in the background, Garland Green, who is Steve Buscemi's character, says, Define Irony, a bunch of idiots dancing around on a plane to a song made famous by a band that died in a plane crash. Several members of Leonard Skinner died on a plane crash on October 20, 1977. I mean, I assumed that there was a plane crash. Yeah. Considering... It's funny, I believe that as a fact, even though it's a movie. Like, I'm like, yeah, that happened. I'm gonna tell people now. (laughs) Well, you'll like this one. Colm Meanies? Meanies? I don't know how you pronounce this man's name. Okay. Colm is a weird name to begin with. Whatever. Colm. C-O-L-M. Is that how you pronounce it? I think it's Colm. Okay. Maybe just Colm. I don't know. Um, anyways, his keychain has a Star Trek communicator ornament on it because he played Chief Miles O'Brien. Oh, it Trek. was. It was. When he hands him the keys at the end, it's a Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Star Trek. Uh, he played uh, O'Brien in Deep Space. No. Yeah, Deep Space Nine. Yeah, Deep, Sp- Deep Space Nine. He's apparently in Next Gen, too. Uh, yeah, at the end of the next gen, and Keiko, his uh, his wife, and I'm sure some nerds out there are gonna correct me somehow. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. The jailbird airplane used during flight scenes had a series of owners, both military and private. In December 2003, it was sold to All West Freight Inc. in Delta Jun- Junction, Alaska. On August 1st, 2010, it crashed into Mount Healy in Denali National Park, killing all three flight crew. Jesus. Wow. That's not a fun fact. I'm editing that one out. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a fun fact. Uh, the sight of the plane flying in low formation over the strip during filming caused a number of Las Vegans to call the police. Yeah, don't fucking blame them. Like, I'd be panicking too. Right. People freaked out the other day when there was a, what looked like a, a meteor fire falling. Fall, fireball. Yeah. yeah. For a re- It was for a Red Bull commercial in LA. They shot it like in downtown. Yeah. It was just guys. And people are like, like, aliens or uh, the world. Yeah. And it's just the, no, it's Red Bull. <laughs> Drink Red Bull. We're not sponsored. But please, Red Bull. Uh, let's see. The movie was inspired by a newspaper article about a plane that transports convicts. Wow. That's fun. I guess nothing like this happened, though, but they're just like, yeah, there's planes that transport convicts. <laughs> uh, according to Dan- Danny Trejo, there was a lot of tough guy competition in almost everything on the set. For example, when one guy would spit on the floor, the others would immediately imitate it and try to spit even farther. Men. 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 That's what that is. Prideful, misogynist. Maybe it's not misogynistic, but it could 
really lend itself to that toxic masculinity. Even in this movie, the whole reason Nicolas Cage ends up going to jail is because he's too prideful. To get in the car and leave yeah. on his first day back. Yeah, just get the fuck out of there, dude. Like You don't have to beat down three people. You yeah. are a Marine. You definitely can beat these yeah. three people. Yeah, we know you can take them on. We don't need you to prove it. Dummy. During setups, Nicolas Cage lifted weights off camera to maintain the physique he had already attained for the film. Entertainment Tonight filmed a report on the film during filming and caught Cage working out between takes. He's he's real dedicated. The film was called Les... uh, It's in French. uh, Whatever it's called in France. I'm not going to attempt to butcher that. But uh, it means The Wings of Hell. Wow, so Con Air could have been called The Wings of Hell. No, that's what it is called in French. Oh. Because uh, Con in French is a slang word for dumb people. <laughs> so it would have been Dumb People Air. Dumb People Air. That's Which I mean, funny. I don't know. Kind of still seems fitting. Like, right, right. <laughs> it was a stupid thing to do. Uh, but yeah, so it's called The Wings of Hell in France. Which is still a, it's a badass name. The Wings of Hell. Yeah. Uh, in an alternate version shown on ABC, an extended scene of Malloy's tirade after learning that fellow DEA agent Sims was killed is featured. So you're telling me that in the TV version there was there's an extended there's scene. an extended scene, not like a normal version. And yeah. They, well, that's so weird in reverse. I'm I'm wondering if maybe they had to cut out quite a bit. So they extended to, it for padding time. Yeah, they're like we'll throw in this extended scene that really doesn't do anything. I guess that makes sense because he's really, I mean, every, anybody should be really upset if somebody they know gets shot, but he was like really angry. Like really, those are my men! Yeah. I know him! <laughs> yeah. And you know, they were rewriting the script all the time too, so. Yeah, yeah. On top of all that. Okay. God, this movie. Uh, the theme song, How Do I Live, was originally performed by 14-year-old Leanne Rhymes. I knew it wasn't performed by whoever I said earlier that they had listed here, but also didn't know that Leanne Rhimes was 14 when this movie came out. Wow. Like, I, I thought she was... So wait, the, the woman singing in the, the movie is a 14-year-old? No, I think it's I think it's performed by somebody else in the movie. That's why when I read out earlier... Oh, okay, okay. But it was, it was originally performed by Leanne Rhimes, who I guess was 14. Interesting. When she... Now I gotta go back and listen to that song. Uh, Gary Oldman was the first choice to play Cyrus the Virus. I, I can see that. I, I still really like John Malkovich. He did a great job. Uh, let's see. Kevin Bacon, Alec Baldwin, George Clooney, Robert De Niro, Michael Douglas, Richard Dreyfus, James Gandolfini, Ed Harris, Rudger Hauer, William Hurt, Michael Keaton, Michael Madsen, Jack Nicholson, Sean Penn, Ron Perlman, Tim Robbins, Tom Sizemore, John Travolta, Peter Weller, and Bruce Willis were also considered. So oh, this, these are so many different So movies. this fun fact is like, so everyone? Should we send an email to everyone? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Anybody who was real cool back then. Because like, if I was making a movie, I would consider every popular that, yeah, person. Yeah. It's like, whatever name we can get on here. Wow, how much different this movie would have been with any of these other people. I can see Kevin Bacon doing it. That'd be fun. Uh, Bruce Willis would have been annoying. I like Bruce Willis, but I don't know. I feel like he would have just been all like squinty eyed and squinty eyed. <laughs> Bruce Willisy. I don't know. Bruce Willisy. Bruce Willis is squinty eyed and Bruce Willisy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So does the audience. <laughs> Uh, composer Mark Mencina had to leave the project in the middle of scoring it due to scheduling conflicts with Speed 2 Cruise Control, which was slated to open at the same time as this film in, film in June 1997. Trevor Rabin, or Robin, who was already on board working closely with Mencina, co-writing some music shortly before Mencina left, completed the score on his own. They do share co-composing credit. So I want to know who I need to blame for this total disaster. <laughs> it's obviously score. split between these three people. <laughs> they well then they both did a terrible job. Side note, we'll be doing a nostalgia rewind for Speed One, not Two. I don't. Know, I feel like we gotta watch Speed Two now because I need to hear this score that this man left this movie to go do. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited to do Speed. All right. Uh, Willem Dafoe and Mickey Rourke auditioned for the part of Cyrus. Ah, uh, Willem Dafoe could have been really fun. Yeah, he could have been. Yeah, I like him a lot. That would have been fun. Uh, during Rourke's audition, he improvised by producing a razor-sharp Bowie knife, both terrifying and impressing the director. Though suitably impressed, they decided to cast John Malkovich instead. Robert Downey Jr., Charlie Sheen, and Matthew Broderick were considered for the part of Vince Larkin. Once again, every actor was considered for this movie. Pretty much. (laughs) I could have seen Matthew Broderick for for, for, uh, John Cusack's role. Still (laughs) glad they went with John Cusack, but... I could have seen Matthew Ryan. Even a young Robert Downey. I could have, I could have seen that too. 
Uh, don't care for Charlie Sheen, so don't care about that part. But uh, ooh, Charlie. <laughs> Oh, here's a bunch of other people who were considered for uh, Nicolas Cage's part. Ready? Uh, Stephen Baldwin, William Baldwin, Tom Cruise, Johnny Depp, Dolph Lodgren, Brad Pitt, Keanu Reeves, Kurt Russell, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Steven Seagal, Sylvester Stallone, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis was considered for multiple roles. And, like, every Baldwin was considered for a role here. (laughs) (laughs) Get the Baldwins in here. (laughs) They'll elevate our movie. Uh, yeah, glad it wasn't any of those. I don't know, John claude probably could have been. Maybe? I guess physically I'm just thinking that he would have been a good fit. <laughs> but, uh, again, glad they, they went with the choice that they did. Oh, can you imagine Keanu in this? No. <laughs> I'm glad he's not in it. <laughs> the car DEA agent Duncan Malloy drives is a 1967 Corvette Stingray C2 and at the time of filming would have retailed for $38,000. Damn. In the 1990s Man. money, 48000 Oh, God, I don't know. I feel like inflation is way more than that <laughs> now. Uh, the writer, Jonathan Henslag, did an uncredited rewrite on the script. Kid Rock-based American Badass on Cameron Poe, so Nicolas Cage's character. That's funny. Wait, what? Kid Rock wrote a... Either this is the name of an album or a song, because I know nothing about Kid Rock, but American Badass? I'm, I think it's a song. He, he... based it off of <laughs> Nicolas Cage's character. <laughs> Oh, man, that's funny. Right, that's funny. Uh, the Jailbird C-123 used during the filming of the taxi scenes is now on display at Wendover Airfield, which is also used to film the scenes of Lerner Airfield. Oh, we should go. <laughs> Memorabilia. <laughs> That'd be fun. Uh, Tim Roth was the first choice to play Steve Buscemi's character. I I can see that, but mm, nah, Steve Buscemi's a tad creepier. I think Steve Buscemi did it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, The real Con Air uses three different types of planes. The Harker 800, Boeing 737, and a Saab 2000. Don't know any of this. You know what a Boeing 737 is. I mean, yeah. But those other planes, yeah, I don't know what that means. Besides Boeing. (laughs) The American theatrical trailer for this film was narrated by Hal Douglas. Back when they narrated trailers. One man. Right? But is Hal Douglas the guy that narrated all of these? Like all trailers Uh. back then? I don't know. That could be anybody. I guess we could look this up, but not gonna. Uh, the names and signatures on Cameron Poe's parole form are of assistant property masters Randy Gunter and Stan Cocker- Cockerell. That's fun. I like I like those type of little things where you work on a movie and you throw your name in there or throw somewhere a, throw a picture of your kids somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> those are the fun things. Uh, Danny Trejo and M- Mc. Kelty Williamson, I I'm sure I butchered that person's name, and I'm so sorry. Um, but they both previously appeared in Heart. Nice. Ah, I never saw them. Never seen it. Uh, Dave Chappelle and Angela Featherstone also both appeared together in Two Hundred Cigarettes. Never seen that. I never saw it either. Oh, you want to know the body count? Guess. A hundred. No. Two hundred. No. I don't know. Forty-three. That's not many. I guess is that like on-screen deaths. Um, yeah, I'm assuming it means the the bodies you actually see. See. Because there's definitely more than 43 yeah, people that died in this yeah. movie. Uh, the dead cons, Benson, Carls, and Popovich, are named after second assistant cameraman Garrett Benson, first assistant cameraman Johnny Carls, and key grip J. Michael Popovich. Popovich. That's pretty funny. That's fun. Fun facts. All right, uh, the last one here. After the fire truck chase sequence at the end, Cyrus the virus would have been killed instantly when the ladder hit the small bridge, according to a technical advisor on the film. He would have, at the very least, been unconscious when his head was subsequently smashed. Definitely. definitely. What scene? At the end when John Malkovich is on the fire truck and uh-huh. he goes through the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. He, he would have died going through that bridge. And if not, at the very least, he would have been unconscious when he was under that thing that smushed his head. That construction site that he ended up landing on. That's also another weird thing in this movie where he lands. Like, that yeah, doesn't make any sense. doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> but that's fine. Uh, but yeah, that's all the trivia. Lots of fun stuff. So, yeah, this is Con Air, 1997. I liked it. Still good. I will recommend. This is, I don't know what we're doing here. It passes. It's good. It holds up. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Yeah. Definitely, because yeah. I'd watch it again. I'd recommend it. I'd recommend it. It's a good time. Just, you know, there's cheese, but you gotta ex- expect that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if, if you know what to expect from 90s. Yeah. It has it has a whole lot of 90s feel. Yeah. But it, it's okay. It's okay. It definitely, yeah. Definitely good. Definitely okay. Yeah. 
Uh, all right. Well, that's Nostalgia Rewind, Con Air, 1997. So if you have any suggestions, comment us, email us, contact some way, Pigeon, you know, let us know. Uh, we'll, we'll take your suggestions up. Because we won't only just do, you know, our nostalgia. We'll do your nostalgia, even if we haven't seen it. True that. So yeah, let us know, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.